Heavenly Father, I just thank you for each one here. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for hearts that are open and receptive to your word. I thank you, Lord, that your word changes us and transforms us. We give you all the praise, all the honor and glory for that. We know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask or think according to the power that works in us. So we thank you for your faithfulness in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Is everyone uh, ready for Christmas? No. <laughs> Any? No, I should have said this. Anyone ready for Christmas? Amen. So, you know, God's good. He'll redeem our time. Amen. 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 We're, I'm gonna, we've been talking about grace, and I'm going to continue to talk about grace today. And because grace is so important, it's not just grace that we're, that we're saved by grace, but we also live by grace. Grace isn't just for salvation, it's for our everyday life. It's what shapes us and molds us into what God wants us to be. Our self-image is shaped by our environment, by the, the environment in this world. Names we've been called, unhealed hurts, unresolved issues, unmet needs. Only God's grace can shape us into all that he desires us to be. That's what, you know, it comes down to is, is God's grace shaping us and forming us. Now, in, in Jeremiah, uh, the 18th chapter, it talks about the potter and the will. And so, in Jeremiah 18, starting in verse 1, it says, the, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And... There I will cause you to hear my words. It's, it's the word of God that will change us. Amen? Amen? Then I went down to the potter's house, and he was, and there he was, making something at the will. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed fit. To the potter to make. And so what we see is that the, the, the clay represents people or us. And, you know, a lot of times what happens is when we get born again, when we get saved, we come to the potter with, with marks. We're, we, we have imperfections in our lives. And even after we're saved, God's still smoothing away by his grace those things. And what a potter does is he'll get the clay and he'll put it in the middle of the pot. Uh, in the middle of the spinning wheel, and, and what happens is he begins to apply more water to it and softens it up, and that, and, and begins to form it, and that's that's what he's doing with us with the water of his word. We come in as a hard lump. Yes. When we get born again, we have rocks in us. We got imperfections in us, and the potter's got to do a lot of work in shaping and and. As he begins to do that, he's, he's using water to soften us, make us more pliable, and begin to shape us and mold us. And that's what God's looking to do in each one of our lives. And, and the thing is, is it's, the, it's the grace of God that shapes us. It's the grace of God that makes us what God desires. We sure can't do it on our own. We need his grace. And, you know, we can see a perfect example of this in the life of Gideon. You know, Gideon... You know, God called we Gideon a mighty man of faith or a mighty man of valor. He was actually shaped by God's grace. In Judges, we can see right here in Judges chapter 6, starting in verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the terebinth tree, which was, at o, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abizarite. Well, he was... Um, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in, in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. So here's Gideon hiding in the wine press, threshing the floor, trying to hide from the enemy. And the, the beauty of it is, is God's calling him something other than what he looks. He's hiding there from the enemy, and God's calling him a mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, in verse 13, Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? 
And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about? Now, I want to stop there for a minute. Gideon was frustrated because the Midianites were just wreaking havoc in Israel. And, and he's, he's, he lost hope here. He's like, you know, where, where is the God of Israel, the one who worked these miracles in the past? We've seen God work miracles in the past. But, you know, there's a tendency when you're going through a hard time, when, when, when the, just the storms of life are ravishing your life, and you're like, going, God, where are you? Has anyone ever been there? Where you're like, going, God, you know, I just can't see the light. I need light. But, you know, God, he was faithful in the past, and he will be faithful in the future. A lot of times we're like the disciples in the boat, where the boat is filling up with water and the storm's coming and Jesus sleeping in the boat and we're like, Lord, where are you? You know, are you going to let the boat go down? And he gives a word, peace, be still. He speaks to the storm and brings peace and brings order. And that's what we need to do is trust the Lord in the midst of, our, of these storms because they will shape us. God's grace will shape us. Something's going to shape us. You're either going to be shaped by... The, the things you've gone through, the rejection you've had, you're either going to be shaped by, by the, the, the failures of your life or, or of what people have said about you, or you're going to allow the, the grace of God to shape your life. But all of us will be shaped. All of us are going to be shaped by this world one way or the other. We're either going to allow God to shape us or we're going to allow the world to shape us. And so... You know, um, when the storms come, we've got to realize that, you know, God is still God, even in the midst of our storms. Even when we're going through things and we're like, well, where are you, God? You know, I need you. And, you know, that's that song, I need you. Amen. I'm not going to sing it, but uh, come on. we always need the Lord. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. We need it every day. We need his strength. Every day. His provision. Every day. Amen. And, and he goes on, he said, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours. <laughs> he just got done saying, I have no might. I have no strength. We're in bondage. And God's saying, Go in this strength of yours. What strength was God talking about? God was talking about the strength that he provides. When God spoke a word over weak Gideon and said, you mighty man of valor, that was the strength. The strength was in the word that God spoke. That is what changed Gideon from a weakling, from someone hiding from the Midianites, and, and caused him to be a great leader and to rise up and to deliver the children of Israel. It was, it was the, the strength of God given by the word that God spoke over him. All of us have had things spoken over us. And not everything that's been spoken over us has been good. But we need to go to the Word and get a good word. Amen? Amen? Then the Lord turned to him, in verse 14, then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Wow. You know, he goes on and he says, So, so he said to him, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. So it's all about who's with you. It's all about who's with you. And God is with us. And the word of God tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Fear comes when you, you feel like you've been left alone. But the word of God clearly tells us we are not left alone. We have the, the creator of the universe. Greater is he who lives in us than he who lives in the world. We, we have victory. We have victory over the powers of darkness. We have victory over every situation in our lives. And it comes through trusting Him. Now, it may not look like victory right now. The storms of life come to each and every one of us. None of us are immune of the storm, from the storms in life. We are all going to face things. We live in a fallen world. 
And bad things happen to good people in, fall, in a fallen world. But thank God that He is our Redeemer. He is our Deliverer. He is the one who comes through for us, even in the darkest night, even in the thickest storm, even in the midst of the waves. God is coming through for us. God never promised us that we would never encounter problems. But he did say this, I am the answer to your problems. <coughs> Amen. I am the answer to your problems. See, see, what God does is he calls those things that do not exist as though they did. In Romans chapter 4, let's jump over there real quick. Romans chapter 4. God is so faithful. And, uh, you know, it looked hopeless to Abraham. And it, it looked hopeless. Well, he was Abram at first, and then God changed him. But, but him and Sarah, it looked hopeless for, for having a family, having one heir, let alone being the father of many nations. And so, you know, God proved himself. What did God do? God gave grace. When things look hopeless in your life, God gives you grace. And so, and, and we'll start, actually, we'll start in verse 16. It says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Now, I find this interesting. It's, it's of faith that it might be according to grace. Grace and faith work together. As a matter of fact, grace is activated by your faith. God can give you grace, but unless you step out on that grace and begin to, to hold on to that word and, and, and depend on that word that God gives you, it's not nothing's going to happen. It takes faith and grace working together. And so, you know, we, we need to, to grab a hold of this and understand that it's, it's your faith. You need to just trust the Lord, even in the midst of the ugliness. And some of us are, have gone through and are going through things. That are challenging. Amen? So, I'm hoping I'm losing this thing here. I'm just falling off. <laughs> Alright. So it says, That the promise might be, uh, Might be sure to all seed, Not only to those who are of the law, But also those who are of the faith of Abraham, Who is the father of us all. For as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead, and who calls those things that do not exist as though they did. He gives life to the dead. See, when we when we see something dead, we think it's over. We think it's hopeless. We think there, there's nothing there. But God can give life to your dead vision. God can give life to 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 things that you felt like were dead. What, you know, I, I may kill a plant, but, you know, God gives life to it. Amen? <laughs> because I, I can't, I, I, I'm not very good with that stuff. And Norma inherited the same gift. <laughs> so, <laughs> amen. But we're believing for better. Amen? All right. They're still alive. <laughs> They're still alive. Yeah. We need to give them water, don't we, huh? Grace. We need to give them grace. So, um, so it says here that, that God, he, he calls those things which do not exist as though they did. And that's what God does. He, doesn't, he didn't show up to earth when it was void and without form and say, ah, oh, darkness, ah, oh, voidness, without formness. I guess that's a word. And uh, he didn't do that. He said, let there be light. He called that, those things that be not as though they were. That's how faith operates. Your faith in grace. And that's how God created all things. Well, when he came up to Abraham, he didn't say, you, you're infertile. He didn't say, you're impotent. He didn't say, you're childless. He didn't say, you're hopeless. He said, no. He said, you are the father of many nations. And so, we, we see here, in verse 18, who, contrary to hope, in hope believed. In other words, it looked hopeless, but he, he got hope because he was given hope by God. God gave him hope. So that he became the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. 
So shall your descendants be. Well, who did the speaking? God did. According to that which is spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, what who had promised? God. God. Exactly. The grace that came to Abraham came from <laughs> the words that God spoke. If you need grace, then just get in the Bible and begin to get an understanding of what the Word of God is saying. You need grace. This book here is full of grace. Full of grace. And we just need to go in there and get the grace that we need. We need to be feeding on that grace. And so it says that he did not waver, verse 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Praise God. So, so God was able to perform it. And the grace came by the word that was spoken. The word that was spoken. See, Abraham, his name was really Abram at first. And what Abram, Abram means is exalted father or respected father. And that's, that's a good name. Abram's a good name. But, but Abraham didn't want just good. He wanted God. He wanted God's will to be done. And God said, you know what? I'm going to change your name from Abram to Abraham, which means the father of many nations. And we all know the story that his name was changed. He began to say, hello, my name is Abraham. Hello, my name is the father of many nations. Hello. I'm, every time his service would come, they'd say, Abraham. What can I do for you? What would God, what, what would he hear? He'd say, Father of many nations. Father of many nations. What, what can I do for you? He just kept hearing the word spoken over him. The promise. The grace that was being imparted to him. Amen. And, and so he, he became Abraham. The father of many nations. So, so God changed his name and changed his destiny. That's what God did. And, and you know, there's been people who have spoken words over all of us. And they're not all grace-filled words. And so God's given us His Word to, to change our name. If you've been called rejected, God calls you accepted. If you've been called uh, a loser, God calls you victorious. If you've been called uh, weak, God calls you strong. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Amen. See, God changed Jacob's destiny and changed, he changed J Jacob's uh, name and changed his destiny. Jacob actually means deceiver. You know, deceiver. So he, he was born with the name deceiver. How would you like to be called that all the time? Hi, deceiver. How you doing? You know? Nice to meet you, deceiver. And, uh, you know, he, he, he deceived his, his oldest brother out of his birthright. He's Esau's birthright was taken from him. And then he, he had an uncle who was even a better deceiver than him. You know, and we know about, about uh, Laban, and that, that he was deceived out of sheep. He was deceived out of his first wife that he was promised. He was deceived out of all kinds of things. But you know what? God is bigger than the names we've been called. Amen. Amen. And so, so Jacob wrestled with God. He wrestled with an angel, actually. He wrestled with God. And the Bible says that he won that wrestling match. He, he came out with a limp, but, but he, he won that match with God. And, you know, I believe God let him win. Amen? He didn't now strengthen God. God's way bigger than, than him. But, but, you know, he wanted God so much he wasn't going to let go. Amen? We, we need to have a hunger for God, but we want him so much, I'm just not going to let go of you, God. I'm holding on to you. And, and, you know, God changed his name. It, it became, you know, he went from deceiver to Israel. Israel means prince with God. Amen. He went from deceiver to Israel. And, you know, there's a nation called Israel today. It, it came out of, out of him. Hallelujah. And so, you know, it, it was a, 
you know, what a, what a wonderful name change, Prince with God. Does that, doesn't that mean, you know, deceiver? Yes. Amen? <laughs> Amen. I know uh, I've been called a few things in my, in my past. I've been called probably a few things since I've been pastoring here. <laughs> But you know, oh no, that wouldn't happen to me. But you know what? God is bigger than the words that people speak over you. God has a word for you. And it's a good word. And it's a word of grace. And that grace is going to make you what God's called you to be. We, what, the thing is, we need to grab a hold of the grace. We need to grab a hold of that. So what has God called you in the Bible? Let's, let's go into the word of God. I have several of them listed. There's way more than this. But just have a few of them listed. God has called you accepted. In Ephesians 1 6, he says, it says, He has made you accepted in the beloved. So if you felt rejected, just know this God accepts you. You've been accepted in the beloved. Amen. You know, it would not hurt you to uh, actually write these things down and begin to meditate on these things because it'll help you. In Ephesians 1.3 it says, you, Who has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Amen. The Bible calls you blessed. Amen. Some people may want to call you cursed. But God says you are blessed. Amen. I have blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. Yes. Ephesians is so rich. Here's another one. Light. Ephesians 5.8 says, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You are the light. You are light. So you don't just have light. The Bible says when you got born again, you are light. You were once darkness, and now you are light. Amen. So now the Word of God says, you can just look in the mirror and say, wow, you know, I'm blessed. I'm the light. I'm accepted. And it, and it, does, it doesn't stop there. New creation. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, it yeah. yeah. says that you're a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, yeah. all things have become new. The Bible says that I am a new creation, and if you receive Christ, then you are a new creation. You are a masterpiece of God. The Bible says that we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. That's another one I could have put down right there. Being His, his workmanship or His, his uh, art, you know, uh, just a masterpiece. Really, it comes down to a masterpiece. Amen. And so, um, the next one I wanted to just say is uh, righteousness. It says that we are the righteousness of God in Him. In 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he who knew no sin became sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. So, you you are, I don't, I don't care if a preacher has, has told you that you're a worm in the mud. And that, that your righteousness is as filthy rags. Because once you got born again, you no longer have that righteousness anymore. You have the righteousness of God. You are righteous in the eyes of God. He sees you as holy. He sees you as righteous. He's, he's viewing you through those lenses. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And, and 1 Peter 2.24 says, By whose stripes ye were healed. You can look in the mirror and say... By God. I'm accepted in the beloved. Amen. I'm blessed. Oh, Amen. Yeah. I'm the head and not the tail. Amen. 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 The, you know, if God's for me, it makes no difference who's against me. God and me, we're a majority. Amen. Amen. It, you know, when you start getting your mind renewed on these things, you, you begin to meditate on these things, it will change the way you act, it will change the way you live. You'll, you'll have boldness when you confront situations and circumstances. You'll have boldness when, when the enemy is trying to throw something up at, up at you. And you say, no, by, you know, by his stripes I'm healed. Or, you know, I am the light of the world. Or I'm victorious. Over and over again, the Word of God has so many wonderful gems in it of what God has done for us in our redemption. And we need to grab a hold of that. See, by faith, or by, by the grace of God, we are... What we are in Christ. It's by the grace of God. And we received it by faith. In, in 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10, it says, for I, this is Paul speaking, he says, For I am of the apostle, for I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, 
because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And by the grace of God, you are what you are in Christ. Amen. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So the grace of God was, was given to him, but he didn't just sit down on the couch with it. He labored. He worked along with the grace. It was the grace of God doing it, but he was cooperating with the grace of God. And that's what we need to do. We need to cooperate with the grace of God. We need, we need to embrace it. We must embrace grace. You either receive it or you leave it. That's the way it works. God will tell you who you are in Christ. And if you believe it and you begin to act on it, it will begin to, to manifest in your life. Or you can say, ah, you know, that's, that's too good to be true. I'm not, I'm not going to believe that. And, and you'll, if you doubt, you'll go without. Even though it's there for you. It's... it's you know, if you want to walk in, in God's triumphant power, then you need to begin to believe it, begin to speak it, begin to think it, begin to live it. Amen? Amen. The grace is there. The, the Bible's full of the grace of God. And, and so, you know, and we can see in 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2, it says, Now, it says, We then... As workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. That means you can receive the grace of God in vain. Paul said he, the grace of God wasn't given to him in vain because he, he, he did something with it. it. says, For he says, In the acceptable time I have heard you, and in, in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You have to receive the grace of God now. I, I am more than a conqueror now. I am blessed now. I am accepted by God now. I am the righteousness of God now. Amen. That's before I, I've been perfected in every way in my flesh, in my life. Let's put it that way. Because the flesh, we're never going to be perfect. You never will. But in your spirit, you are perfect. You, you are the righteousness of God. All these things are on the inside of you. God wants this grace to begin to flow on the outside of you. Amen. Amen? You know, we may not be experiencing some of these things right now, but, but we can experience them. They're the grace of God. What do you do with them? Don't let this, this grace, don't let it be in vain. And so, you know, we have to receive them now. Now is the acceptable time. That's why in... You know, Mark 11, 23, 24, it says, believe that you receive it, and then you'll have it. Believe that you receive it while you're weak, and you'll be strong. Believe that you receive it while you're struggling, and you'll succeed. It's, it's, what, it's the grace of God. It's that, like that life preserver thrown out. You have to grab a hold of that. Grab a hold of it. You know, the, we can see this clearly with the parable of the sower. The seed that the sower sowed, it has tons of potential but until the ground actually receives the, the seed and nourishes the seed, the seed won't do anything. You can have seed in a bag at home, but until you put it in the ground and begin to water that seed, it doesn't matter how much potential that seed has, it's never going to produce anything. The mightiest oats came from a seed, a small seed. And, and, but the thing is, is, they had to be planted in the ground. They had to be nourished. They had to be taken care of. We need to grab a hold of the seed of the word. And, and allow that to change us. You know, we were born again by the incorruptible seed, the incorruptible word of God, which is, which is the seed. Our seed remains in us. Amen? So, uh, see, grace must be received. It's not an automatic thing. Grace must be received. And grace comes from the word of God. You've got, you know, we call this a book, but you've got a bag full of seeds. Amen? i got a leather bag full of seeds. Amen. And I need to believe these seeds and, be, and embrace these seeds and let these seeds begin to change me, shape me. And that's what the, the, this message is about, being shaped by grace. Let's go to Hebrews chapter two, chapter 4. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4. God's good. Amen. He's given us so many wonderful promises. He's given us... All the promises of God are yes 
in him and amen in him to the glory of God through us. And so, we need to embrace this. In uh, Hebrews chapter 4, starting verse 1, it says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any one of you seem to have come short of it. See, there's a promise to, to you. The, the Bible's full of promises, but you can come short of those promises. And, and you, you know, you can short out those promises by not receiving them and acting on them. And it says here in, in verse 2, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. See, you've got to mix faith in with the word of God. It says, For we who have believed do enter that rest. And so, if we want to enter the rest of God, we've got to believe the Word of God. Act upon the Word of God. Act as though it's true because it is. Amen? Amen? In verse 16 of that same chapter, it says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. If you're going through a time of need, then you need to come boldly before the throne of grace. We need to be bold in our prayers. We need to be seeking the Lord's face with boldness. You know, prayer is not uh, it. Prayer it, it's it's not a monologue. It's a dialogue. That's what prayer is. In other words, it's not just us talking to God. You know, you you need to wait and hear from God too. Hear what God wants to speak into your heart, into your life. Hear what God is speaking. You know, God's given us a ton of word in here. But sometimes he'll give you a specific word that you're not going to find in here. But it will always agree with the word of God. He'll give you a word. And he'll say, you know, uh, that I'm there for you. I'm helping you. And it agrees along with the word of God. Or he'll tell you, he'll give you specific instructions on what to do. And, and when you obey what God's told you to do, then that grace begins to be activated and works. Just like, you know, Peter stepped out on the water. Remember? Um, he, Peter said, you know, if, if you're true, if you're the Son of God, if you're Jesus, you know, bid me to come out to you. And the Lord said, what? He said, come. What did Peter do? He stepped out on that word, and he started walking on the water. Amen. Because it was that word that was spoken that was the grace for him to able to do it. See, the grace is God's ability for you. It's not just unmerited favor. It's, it's unmerited ability. Unmerited favor means it's favor that you didn't earn. Unmerited ability is it's an ability that you didn't earn. But you still have to cooperate with it. Amen? You still have to cooperate with that. And so, see, see the word of God is it's in, in uh, 2 Peter 1 verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the more, more knowledge you get of God, the more grace is multiplied to you. The more peace is multiplied to you. If you need grace and peace, then, then you need to go to the Word. Because the Word, the, when you get into the Word of God, it begins to change you. When you begin to act upon it, it begins to shape you. And we all need shaped by the Word of God. You know, sharing the gospel to someone is, is is sharing grace. When you share the Word of God and you share the gospel to someone, that's sharing grace. And when the people believe it and accept it, it changes them forever. They become born again. They become new creations in Christ. They, beca they become everything that we just read about, all these good in Him promises. And, and so, you know, Peter, when he was sharing the gospel with Cornelius, uh, in, in Acts 11, 14, it says, uh, the angel said this, he said, Who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. It was the grace that was in the words that was spoken by Cornelius. Amen. That word brought salvation. Amen? The word of God will bring salvation. You know, salvation... It is bigger than just saving us from hell. Salvation is bigger than that. It's, it's, it's deliverance. It's wholeness. It's prosperity. It's, it's all these wonderful things. And so we need to understand that 
that we need to cooperate with this, with this grace that God's given us. And it all comes through the word of God, the words that are spoken. See, grace is imparted by words, but it's received by faith. See, when you speak some, to someone, you can, your words are always going to impart something. Are you imparting grace to people? Or are you imparting uh, something else? I don't know. What would you call that? Disgrace? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it's, it's the grace of God that, that we need. We need, you know, if, if a husband or a wife is, is not walking godly, you don't call them that ungodly thing. You know, I'm married to this ungodly thing here. You begin to speak God's word over them. Amen? You, you begin to thank God for a good, healthy, whole spouse. For healing them. For bringing deliverance to them. You know, it, what kind of words are we speaking over our children? What kind of words are we speaking over our husband or our wife? What kind of words are we speaking over our, our employers? Or our employees? Or our students? teachers out there, amen, you know, uh, I mean, I know there can be challenges in the classroom, I probably was one of them whenever I was younger, and, uh, younger, yeah, just a few years back, but, uh, but, you know, uh, it, it's, what kind of words are, are we speaking over, do you want what you have, or are you going to believe God for something better, amen, oh Lord, I thank you that my spells is, is a person of love. Amen. I thank you they're sensitive to God. I thank you, Lord, that my children obey your ways and, and, and they love you. Now, your children might not be doing that real well at the moment. But that, that doesn't mean you, you, you call them the way they are. You, you're calling those things that be not as though they were. You begin to speak a word over them. Begin to speak God's word over them. And begin to see God's grace change them. Amen. I've seen this work. I've seen where little children have been struggling and disruptive and, and whatever. Begin to, and people begin to speak words over them. And all of a sudden, they just like a flower gets open up. And, and they, You know, children will rise up to the words that you're speaking to. Them. If, if they're driving you crazy and they're, and they're misbehaving, if you're calling them a brat, then guess what you're going to have? You're going to have a brat. Because you're just reinforcing it, reinforcing it, reinforcing it. You brat, you, you brat, you know. And, and, you know, you lazy thing, you, you lazy thing. Clean your room. Begin to speak and say, you know, I, I just praise God that I have a child who, who is healthy and whole. A child who is a blessing. A child who, who is not spoiled. A child who knows how to share and give. You know, speak those words. Not only to them, but when they're not around, speak to them. Amen? <laughs> Begin to see them through the eyes of grace. Begin to speak words of grace over them. Over your spouse, over your friends, over your situation. Uh, are, are, you, are you just, you know, going to speak over your situation and call it what it is? Or are you going to begin to speak the word over it? Amen? I know all of us go through things. And we all go through frustrations. And there's moments where we struggle with our confessions. This is not condemnation. I'm trying to encourage you. Just change it. Amen. Change what you're saying. Amen. Amen. And so in, in Ephesians 4, 29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Your words can impart grace to people. If you know someone's going through something and, and they're struggling, begin to speak the word over them. Begin them a word and say, you know, God's coming through for you. And, and, you know, it may look like there's no hope, but, you know, we serve the God of all hope. Amen. Amen. Abraham had no hope, but in hope he believed. And God made him the father of many nations. Wow. See, that's how this faith stuff works. This is how grace and faith work together. God gives you the the grace, the word, and by faith you agree with him. And you begin to, to speak the word. Stand on the word of God. Amen? Amen? It says here in 1 Thessalonians 2, 13, it says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, 
Because when you you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. If you want this word to work, believe it. Trust it. Stand on the word. Because the circumstances may look much different. The, the situation may look much different. But we need to stand on the word of God. Even through the storms. Because God will come through for us. He always does. He always has. And he always will come through for us. Amen. But that doesn't mean you're not going to have some, some challenges in between. God never promised us that we were just going to float down rivers of peace on flowers of ease. <laughs> Amen. That Paul experienced trials in his life. God delivered him out of those trials. But that didn't mean that he didn't experience them. <laughs> we are all going to experience these. But we've got to stand on the grace to get us to the next place. Amen. Stand on the grace of God. It will get you to the next, to a good place. Amen. Amen. It'll get you to a good place. In Psalm 107, verse 20, it says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them of their destructions. Delivered them of their destructions. What, when the people of Israel were in trouble, what did God send them? His word. When you are dealing with situations and you're dealing with troubles, God's going to do the exact same thing. He is going to send you His word. And that's, that word that he sends you will have all the grace you need to succeed. That grace that he gives you, you just plant your feet on the word of God. You say, I am standing on that rock. It doesn't matter what storms come my way. I am standing and I will not fall. Amen. Because God is my rock. Amen. You know, the Bible says Jesus is the word. You're standing on the word. You're trusting Jesus. Amen. In... in Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In other words, don't let the world shape you. Don't be conformed or shaped by the world. Because it's the world wants to shape you, and God wants to shape you. God wants to shape you with his word. The world wants to shape you with all the perverseness, all the negativity, all the defeat that the world has. And so it's coming and it's trying to shape you. But here it tells us that when our minds are getting renewed, we begin to get transformed and shaped by God. We need to begin to think in, 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 in line with the way God thinks. In, in, in line with His grace. Amen? What has God said about you? What has He said about you? See, see, God wants the good, acceptable, and perfect will to happen in your life. And it's only going to happen as we get our minds renewed on the Word of God. As we allow the Word of God to shape us. What are you... You know, and I've been talking about how we, we talk to our children, talk to our spouses, to our employers, to our students... What about yourself? What do you say about yourself? Well, you know, I'm a loser. I can't ever do anything right. Everything goes wrong. Everything goes wrong. Every time I put my hand in, it just falls apart. Uh, you know, that may be true. <laughs> but you can change that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Begin to say, you know. Begin to say something different Amen. about your life and about yourself. Amen? It, see, that, that's the thing. We, we, we're, we're all into this, you know, I've got to tell the truth. Yes, you do got to tell the truth. But the Word of God is truth. Amen? Amen? Begin to speak the truth Amen. over your life, the Word of Amen. God over your life. Don't be speaking what you have, but be speaking what you're believing God for. Amen. Amen. Begin to speak the blessings of God. If you need a job, don't don't go around saying, you know, that you're a poor thing and no one will no one will hire me. That's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Begin to hook up with people of faith, 
people who are going to agree with you according to the word and begin to speak the word. Thank you, Lord, I have favor with people. Thank you, Lord, I have a good job that pays well, that, that, that provides my needs and gives me a surplus where I can actually go out and be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. And you can do that because the word of God promises that. And so, you know, um, don't call your spouse as you have them. Call them as you want them, according to the word. You know, I mean, don't don't uh, go like, outside of the word and start confessing things on your spouse. Okay? We, we are in agreement with the grace of God, with the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. My spouse is a blessing. Amen? And she is. Amen. She is. That was a fake smile. Oh, that was, it's a real one. She's a blessing. She, she worked real hard yesterday. I appreciate her, too. Oh, you're so good. No, I'm what I'm thinking of a deep role. But, you know, so what has God called you? Let's go back to that. God, God called you accepted. Amen. You're accepted. You're blessed. You're the light. You're the new creation. You're righteousness. You're healed. You're triumphant. You're more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Amen. You have favor with God and man. You, you are, are um, victorious because greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. Amen. I mean, wow. When your mind gets renewed on these things, it will change your life. It will change the way you talk. You begin to impart grace to the hearers. There are hearers out there. When you, when you know, when you speak a word to someone, you're, you're, you're planting seed in the soil, in the soil of their heart. You are. And what are you imparting to them? When you speak words of yourself, you're planting seeds in the soil of your own heart. What are you saying about yourself? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Or, you know, I'm blessed, I'm healed, I'm smart. Amen. The, the memory of, of the righteous is blessed of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God thank God for His Word. So, so, you know, God's, God's will is that we are not conformed to this world. We must be shaped by His grace in order to prove what is His good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. His perfect will in our lives. See, we are His workmanship created. Christ Jesus. You are his masterpiece. Start saying that about yourself. I'm his masterpiece. I'm his work of art. Amen. I'm his righteousness. You know, that's that's where a lot of challenges come. People talk about how badly they're, they're messing up instead of talking about how they're the righteousness of God and God is helping them to overcome. God is helping me to overcome the habits in my life. God is helping me to overcome the words that I speak. Amen. I'm, I'm beginning to speak righteous and holy words. Good, wholesome words. God's helping me. When we begin to, to do that, it'll transform us. God will, God's grace will begin to manifest in our lives. Amen. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you've given us an abundance of grace. Lord, we thank you that you have helped us. You've given us your word. You've spoken incredible promises over us. That we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Lord, we thank you that, that you've taken care of us. And you're helping us every step of the way. Lord, we thank you for all the grace. And we're embracing that grace by faith. We're trusting in you. And Lord, we know that it is going to produce a mighty harvest in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you are the potter and we're the clay. And you're shaping us by your word. You're shaping us by your hands. And, Lord, you're making a masterpiece. And we thank you for that. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen.